All right, seventh grade. Today we're talking about parallelogram, triangle, and trapezoid area calculations. And so what I really want to be the case by the end of this video is that uh, you not only understand how to use the formulas, but you also have a basis for understanding where those formulas come from to calculate these different areas. So hopefully you could even memorize them uh, by trying to visualize or draw it out or explain it to yourself in the future. Um, so the name, date, title on this one, and let's look at uh, some pictures that are going to kind of show us how do we find these areas. Now what we talked about in class and what you've done before is dealt with a lot of rectangles and rectangular figures, and we've talked about why the, the idea of base times height works for that. So what I want to show you is that first for parallelograms, and this is a parallelogram again at the top left because it has two sets of parallel sides, the left and the right are parallel, meaning they'll never touch, and so are top and bottom. Well, the parallelogram, I want you to try and imagine we're using every, the rectangle as the basis for all of our other areas, so what relationship do you see between this figure? And so maybe you can pause this video and try and tell yourself what do you think the formula is going to be uh, for finding the area of a parallelogram. Um, we're going to use these side lengths that they give us, or we can use just the bases, the height, what are we going to do? Um, and what we're going to do is we're going to see that if we take this extra side out, if we drop a perpendicular, a height, and we cut it off right there at the perpendicular, then the excess, the slanted section, can be moved over here. And now what we have is we just created uh, we created a triangle, and we'll cross this part out because we just moved it. If we move that, then our new figure is just a rectangle like we've had before. And we know that to find the area of a rectangle, we multiply the base times the height. So that's what will give us the area of this parallelogram. So that's useful to know that it's just the same formula as it is for a rectangle, but what you have to realize is we're not using the side length. We're not using the slanted side length like in a rectangle, we're not just using the normal side that's drawn. We have to look at the the height, the parallel that drops down, or the perpendicular, sorry. Now what do we have to realize about triangles? Well, we used rectangles as the basis for this formula. For triangles, we're just going to say, well, we know the formula for a parallelogram. Let's try and create a parallelogram. And so what you're going to have to do first is you're going to have to double that triangle. So I made an exact copy and maybe you can see how can I create a parallelogram, pause, maybe try and see it for yourself. Once you're back with me, you'll see that, well, if we just double it, flip it, and connect them, we just created a parallelogram. It kind of looks like similar to that one did before. We have two sets of parallel sides. We have a height and a base. So we know that to find the area of this parallelogram, we would just multiply the base times the height. Again, this section over here. Um, could be moved to create our uh, a rectangle. So the, the reasoning behind this stays the same. Here's my pen. Uh, but here we just have a triangle, so that's half of it. So we have half of this parallelogram. So it's going to be one half base times the height will tell us the area of just this triangle. Now we're going to do something very similar, and I'll give you that warning. We're going to do something very similar here. So see if you can figure this one out. Uh, how are we going to find the area of a trapezoid where the base, the bases are different? We have a height, we have two side lengths. Do we use either of those side lengths? What do we do? Well, again, if we double it, make a copy, flip it, and connect, now we have a parallelogram. And part of the reason is these, these bases now are, the, the bases of this parallelogram are the same length because they each have this longer section and they each have this so shorter section, base one and base two. But what we see is that we're going to do something similar. We'll say it's one half the base times the height, because again, we doubled it. And we're just worried about one, one trapezoid. So we need one half the base times the height. But the base of this trapezoid, or of this parallelogram, is made up of both the bases of the original trapezoid, both sides, um, both opposite sides. So we need to use those. Uh, we'll add them together, then we'll multiply by the height, but then we'll multiply by one half because we don't want the area of this whole parallelogram, we just want one half of it, or one of the trapezoids. So hopefully these uh, explanations make sense, they show you where these formulas are from. I'm going to ask you now to actually copy down the formulas uh, in their official
version. So here's what we say for the notes. Area is still measured in square units, just like we've always known. A height is always perpendicular or at a right angle to a base. So that's what a height is. It's also called an altitude sometimes. But it's always perpendicular or at a right angle to the base. So the slanted sides, we're not going to use those. We need the heights. Finally, the formulas themselves are that area of a parallelogram is base times height. Area of a triangle is one half the base times the height. Remember, we doubled it to get our parallelogram. Area of a trapezoid is one half, add the bases, and then multiply by the height. And again, that's because we doubled the trapezoid, made a new parallelogram where the base of the parallelogram was uh, the sum of the two bases of the different sides of the trapezoid. But we always multiply by the height. So there you go. Let's see what this looks like when we actually work out some problems. So in this first one, it just says find the area. And we have to recognize the shape first. What is the shape? Well, this is a parallelogram. So we know that the area of a parallelogram, we can start by saying area of, I like to draw them. You can also write parallelogram, is equal to the base times the height. What do we know about bases and heights? Well, a base is at one side, and a height is at a right angle to a base. So our base right here is 13. This could be a base, but which has a height coming perpendicularly from it? And it's that one at the bottom. So our base is going to be 13 meters. Our height in this case is 4.5 meters. Now if we know about multiplying mixed numbers, you would know that we need to convert this to an improper fraction. And 13 over 1 would be your other fraction. You do top times top over bottom times bottom. But we can also do this one mentally, and I'm going to encourage you to do that in this case. 13 times 4. Well, to multiply by 4, you can double it and then double your product. So 13 times 4 would be 13 times 2 is 26. And multiply that by ti times 2, you get 52. But we don't just have 52 or 4 groups of 13. We need to get another half group of 13. And half of 13 would be 6.5. So 52 plus 6.5, that's going to give us 58.5. Now I want you to see something else. What did we just multiply? These numbers, we also multiplied meters times meters. And we know that any number times itself, or even any unit times itself, variable or unit, could also be written with an exponent. So it's a meter squared. That's our unit, and that's what we need to know for this one. Make sure you have that work copy down. Please have the picture too. So you can see that we were actually not using the side length. We were just using the height. We're going to move on to another one. Find the area of a triangle with a base of 6 feet, a height of 16 feet, and other sides of 22 feet and 25 feet. So first let's just start off with the formula for area of a triangle. And I ask you to show your work kind of like I do uh, with this equation that drops down consistently. The area of a triangle is 1 half the base times the height. Remember, we had to double it to make a parallelogram, and the bases stayed the same. So the area of the triangle is going to be the base, and this says the base is 6 feet, so we'll do 1 half times 6 times the height, height of 16. And we should put feet, so I will. Now, if we're going to multiply these, we can actually multiply them in any order we want, um, because the commutative property of multiplication says you can multiply, if you just multiply and do it wherever, in whatever order you want. I'm going to multiply 1 half times 16 first um, because I know half of 16 is 8 feet and that leaves me with a pretty easy uh, last bit of multiplication to do if I can get this to right. So 8 feet times 6 feet, that's going to give us a final answer. This, air, this triangle has an area of 48, 6 times 8, and feet times feet can be written as feet squared. So there we got another one. Again, we're just using the formula, plugging in the v values, and then simplifying on that side using the order of operations. Or in this case, other properties of numbers. So let's move on uh, to one more example problem. And this is, hopefully you can tell, a parallelogram. So remember, what did we do in this case? Well, we doubled it and we flipped it, and we made a, uh, a trapezoid that way. OK, so the area. Or we made a parallelogram. I'm misspeaking all the time in this video. So we made a tr trapezoid into a parallelogram by doubling it, but we're only going to want half. Now, the base and the height, we used the normal height, so the height didn't change. It's 5 feet. That's the perpendicular, remember? 
But when we made that new parallelogram, it didn't just have a base of 15 feet and it didn't have a base of 9 feet. It had both those sections. So we need to do, oh, I shouldn't have, uh, shouldn't have already filled in the 5. I should have. Should have done base one plus base two. So we're using variables to start. So base one plus base two. I'm writing the normal formulas. I'm gonna cut that guy out, and we'll fill it in with just what is the variable that represents? That's the height. Now, what is the area of this trapezoid? Well, it's gonna be one half. What are my base one and base two that I have to add first? Nine plus fifteen. That's gonna be twenty-four. 1 half times 24 times 5. The easiest way to do this is probably to find half of 24 first. And we'll say the area of this trapezoid is equal to 12, because that is a 24. 12 feet times 5 feet. And that should be a times tables you have memorized. The area of this trapezoid funkily drawn trapezoid is going to be equal to 60 and again feet times feet is feet squared and why does square units make sense because well we're filled up this two-dimensional space the area is a space inside we need two-dimensional measurement to find it out all right hopefully you have all that down I'm gonna leave you with two of your own as always the first one says a parallelogram has a base of nine feet and a height of two and a half feet what is its area Number two says, find the area of this triangle. So see what values do you need to use, what's the formula you're going to use, and I'll catch you later.